We're getting ready to mark out where we want our brackets for the house. And I'm starting in this front left corner here that's next to the garage because this is gonna be the high traffic area next to the drive where everybody's gonna be walking by it. So I wanna to try to get this corner. If something's not gonna be perfect, I'm gonna to try to get this corner as close to perfect as I can. And then we can make adjustments on the far end because there won't be as much traffic down there. So I'm gonna use pencil first in case we need to make changes. And we're gonna mark it an inch and a half back from the corner each way. And this will kind of give us a starting point of where we need to be. 55, 10, 55 feet, 10 inches on the nose. Okay, we're an eighth difference. So we are 55, 10, and 1 eighth. So it's probably gonna be out of square a little bit, but we'll, we'll adjust and make it right. Ooh, the tape is shiny. Let me know when you're ready. 3910. I'm not too worried about a 16th, so let's call it 39 feet 10. So we're about an eighth inch off. Should be 69 six and seven eighths and we're at 69 seven so that's an eighth off let's check the other way and see how far off we are there we can adjust that a little bit if we need to just wait so you don't bend it we're not touching anything 69 six and seven eighths so that's right on the money so I think what needs to happen is then that back corner needs to come in slightly. I think I have our corners placed exactly where I want them. And I learned a few lessons with the garage and what I'm trying to do with the house is get away from that aluminum flashing that I put underneath the Versetta stone. If you remember that, I, if you've been following along on the build, I had to take some of the Versetta stone back off because I wasn't happy with the foundation to exterior wall transition and I wanted to seal that up a little better. So I'm going to do a little better on planning for the house. Now that I have that experience behind me, I know exactly what I want. The corners we have placed, we snapped chalk lines on all the walls and I checked everything to see where the outer edge of my girt board is going to lay in relation to the outside of this foundation wall. And I think we're set pretty good. All of the OSB will be outside the foundation. So if we get when we do get rain any rain that gets behind the exterior cladding and hits the weather barrier is going to run down and run down on the outside of the foundation walls not on top of it where it could possibly run back up underneath we had to put aluminum flashing on the garage to solve that problem but in the house i'm going to do a little better job we're going to improve on uh, what we did with the garage learn from our experience so i think we're in a good spot I have all the corners marked with a uh, felt tip marker, so hopefully those stay. I'm gonna be gone for the weekend as our NASCAR team goes out to Phoenix for the championship race. We'll come back next week and hopefully start getting some of these brackets set. Okay, well, the weekend didn't go too well for us, but we're back and we're gonna get the corner brackets split in half here and get these things set. I just checked our measurements and the corner placements and everything looked good. So we're gonna get right down to splitting these in half. So for the corner brackets, we split these in half. And what I'm doing is I'm measuring from the outside of post to outside of post here. 
which for a three ply two by six post should be four and a half inches wide, which puts me right on this chalk line. With my girt board on the outside, that puts another inch and a half out there, so I'm at six inches. And that is right at the edge of my concrete, which should be nice because then the OSB will be another half inch outside that, and that's what I'm shooting for. So all the corner posts are marked. Now what I'm gonna do is go through and mark it with um, some markers. That way the line is more permanent and we'll put the tap cons in to hold the bracket in place. Man, between the weather and just life, this part of the project has taken much longer than I anticipated, but today we have the front wall brackets set. I've quadruple checked everything and I think we're in a good spot to go ahead and temporarily anchor these down. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the small tap con screws in just to hold the anchors in place so they don't move and then we'll get these other three walls set. The last step to fasten these brackets to the foundation wall is putting in the concrete anchors. We have everything tap conned in to hold everything in place and now we're going to go back through and put the main anchors in. Where I bought these brackets, they also came with the hardware pack. It includes everything except for the tap cons that I used in the previous uh, part of the video here to get these brackets fastened in place. Everything else is supplied, the bracket to wood transition you have your through bolts and your lag screws those are all included in this packet and then the main concrete anchors screw anchors are included as well so we're going to get those put in and put a wrap on this foundation wall I like to finish these off by hand tightening just so I can get a feel for when the anchor actually contacts the bracket. Because you definitely don't want to overdrive these. If you overdrive these, you'll reduce the uplift capacity on these anchors. So 
The directions just tell you to tighten it down to make contact with the bracket. So I use my impact to get it down to almost touching the bracket and then hand tighten it so I get a really good feel for how tight this bolt actually is up against the bracket. The directions tell you to blow the holes out to get all that dust out of the bottom and overdrive your holes by at least five eighths of an inch. I'm going an inch just because that's the max on my bit. And uh, it seems to be working out pretty good so far, except when you hit that stupid rebar. I'm glad it's in there, but man, it's a pain in the butt. Well guys, that's four brackets, and at the rate I'm going, I'm not gonna have enough cell phone battery to show you guys the rest of this process, but I think you get the idea of how to do this. Uh, it's really not that hard. Just follow the directions that come with it. I'll, I'll put a link in the description below so you guys can read up on all the specs if you wanna use these sturdy wall brackets for your post frame build. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna get the rest of this stuff finished up, hopefully tonight, while I still got some sunshine and uh, move on to the next phase of the build. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.